And um, so we're going to spend a, a few songs in worship, and then we'll call on the team uh, pretty much after that. Feel free to join in, stand in his presence if you can.
Help me. 
at the waters for my release, oh Yahweh. Cause you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah.
forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. And death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your Yes, 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 Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you so much for stepping into our land, our Egypt, <laughs> and taking us by the hand. Thank you. Thank you for setting us so free. Thank you for uh, drawing us out into the promised land. And we are, we are blessed. We know it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And we revel in that, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I've been finding myself in Colossians the last while here, and, and there's this verse or two that um, Paul is, is talking, and he says, um, I pray that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work. And, and you know, how do you please the Lord? You're bearing fruit. Um, you're bearing fruit in every good work. And uh, an apple tree doesn't grunt. You know, the apple tree bears fruit. And um, we bear fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. And that's just a good word for us. Um, and so be blessed with that. Um, so I'm going to, um, El Elliot and his team, I'm going to let him introduce them, um, came in this morning, and we've been having a great time today together. But I say welcome, Elliot and team, and um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Elliot, and you take it from there. Wow. Come on, Holy Spirit. <laughs> you guys look good. How are you guys doing tonight? So good to be back. So many familiar faces. I feel like I'm coming home, and uh, this is good. I know with some of you, we stay in touch on Facebook. You guys in my heart, you know, I uh, often see some of you through Facebook and praying for you often, and, um, you know, it's so good to be here. I... Uh, you know, but this time I was like, Eileen, can I have some water? She's like, what are you talking about? Just find a cup, you know, <laughs> and get some water. I'm like, I love it, you know, coming home. Um, I'm, so, I'm so excited for this weekend, guys, and expectant. You know, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for, for Jesus who shows up in the middle of the storms. I'm so thankful for Jesus who leaves the 99 for the one. You know, I, I really feel that this whole weekend, it's that story of Jesus leaving 99 for the one. I've been really meditating and asking the Lord about, you know, uh, um, with some of my friends, you know, uh, who have big platforms and they travel the world and, you know, and, 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 and we were talking, I was talking to one of my friends, I was like, hey, how do you keep the fire burning? How do you keep the fire burning? He told me, he's like, Elliot, it's, it's the same. It's, it's you, you stop for the one as you stop for a thousand because it's a character of Jesus, you know? And um, I really feel like that this is the weekend that God wants to meet the one 
It's not about the crowd. It's about the one who is hungry for the Lord, who is hungry for his spirit. Because at the end of the day, we only get him. You know? So I'm so excited because I get to come with friends. You know, um, uh, tonight, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be the one that's speaking. I'm excited for tomorrow. Uh, for tomorrow morning, we're doing outreach. And then tomorrow night, it's going to be phenomenal. I'm speaking. Then Sunday morning, I'm going to share a little bit more. Hopefully, we'll show you some pictures of what's going on in my life. Some of you know. You know, uh, I've been um, pastoring a church called The Living Room. Uh, you know, we started during COVID, hallelujah, when he do it. Uh, and um, it's been incredible. The Lord has done incredible things among us. And I have an incredible team around me, but really, they're all my friends. One of the things that, you know, um, uh, someone told me if, if uh, you want to change the world, get friends around you and do it. You know, so that's what I did. And uh, I want to introduce them. Uh, ben and Kevin, would you stand, guys? Uh, uh, just come up really quick. Just stand. Good looking guys. Hallelujah. Anointed. Uh, come on. And each one of them, you know, carry anointing on their life and purpose and gift and uh, have incredible journey with God and relationship with the Lord. You get to hear a little bit uh, from their lives um, um, this weekend. Uh, ben is going to uh, share with us tonight and we're going to do some ministry, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. Um, but Ben is one of my best friends, we, get to, we got to do uh, BSSM school together. Uh, he happened to be from my town, lived about a mile down the road from me. We found each other in school and just got to travel together. South Africa did a lot of ministry together, you know, throughout. And uh, he moved to China. He, I'm sure he's going to share a little bit maybe about himself. And, uh, but this man, you know one of those, I don't know if you have friends. I have Ben is one of those people that I'm like, Lord, am I saved? You know, I check myself, you know. He knows Jesus. And it's, he's the same in a secret place with you by himself as he's in a pulpit all the time. And it's always Jesus. Every day he can sh share testimonies and testimonies about what the Lord has done in his life and doing every day. You know? So what a privilege to run with this man. And, and um, yeah, take us away, bro. It's all you. Love you, brother. Yeah, br just bring, it, bring your stuff and... All right, is it okay if I bring this down, bring this here? I feel actually like, yep, thanks. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So, guys, yeah, as, as Elliot said, my name is Ben. It's a joy to be able to be out here. And, you know, I just want to say this. Like he said, if you're not doing your Christian walk with people you love and enjoy doing life with, God's going to call you to run with people. You know, you can't do this alone, but do it with people you love. Like, we were praying before we came here, and one of the things I was so excited about is to do this with these guys, to be out here with you guys, but with, with these guys. And it's, you know, I've done a lot of things. Probably each of us have our walk and our history with the Lord, but it's almost like sharing the most beautiful things in your life by yourself. <laughs> or maybe you're like, it's with people, but those that you really have grown close to and you say, man, this is so special, you know? And so I really want you to even gather from us. And I think when I say us, even what the body of Christ is doing with the living room, even some of the things that the Lord is doing in our hearts, that this is something that is meant to be, when we use the word family or we use the context of relationship, you know, we had such a beautiful afternoon this, this afternoon. And, you know, uh, Pastor Elmer is saying, sharing some stories about what the Holy Spirit was doing in his life and how the Holy Spirit's just been bursting forth in different things and opportunities. And see, when I get a love for people, I want to champion them. And I'm, I'm sitting there in the back seat, and he's driving, and I'm like, come on. You know, come on. I, I'm so excited to hear what God is doing. And it, but if we're just, just kind of distant 
and it, 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 it doesn't have the same impact. But you can even in a short period of time just get a love for people and an enjoyment for going, wow, we get to do this together. And it's, it's absolutely amazing, you know. And so just a little bit about myself, as Elliot had mentioned, that, you know, I'll, I'll probably just take you back even to the, to the recent times. Um, actually, I'll start this. I came to Christ through an organization called Young Life. And Young Life is super relational. They take kids, high schools, middle schools. How many people know Young Life? been impacted by the ministry. I, I love it because they say like every kid everywhere and it's like, I don't know if it's every generation, I forget their tagline, but it's, it's basically they reach kids like myself and they come and say, let me do life with you and show you what this Christian life looks like lived out. And it's really cool when you're a high schooler and you get invited to a college and to go to a college cafeteria and go spend some time with some folks that are older than you. And I remember over and over people pursuing me and spending time with me and, you know, when I went to camp, I went to their camp, they basically said, this will be the best week of your life or we'll give you your money back. I originally went because there was going to be ladies. I mean, I'll just be honest. And I was like, there's going to be ladies going to this thing. And so I'm going to show up. And what, what business do I have? I don't know what this is about. And life is pretty good. I don't need this. And I honestly didn't know what I was missing. And so I, I show up to this camp and they share this simple gospel. I'm talking about there's a cross on the stage Jesus Christ, Christ crucified. Third day, he raises from the dead, and he says, for anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. He says, who of you is driving your own car and wants to surrender your life to Jesus? And you have to understand something. I went to church growing up, and I love the church I went to, but I never actually was given that invitation. Who of you is driving your own life and wants to surrender your life to Jesus? And so that marked my life. When I, when I received Jesus, I did not know what I was receiving. My buddy was a quarterback of the, the football team. I'm sitting there and I look at him and Matt, I'm not sure what this is all about, but if this Jesus is real, something's gonna happen. And if not, no harm, no foul. And so I asked Christ, whatever that prayer was, basically here are the keys to my heart and I ask you to come in. And out of that place, I knew in, the, in a moment, in a moment, there is, there is power. There's power in his name. There is power in us simply saying we come as we are. In that moment, I walked out of that place completely different. And the testimony that I bring and we bring throughout the world is just that. Not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of God. You have been made new. And so I share that, that moment. And that moment has led me to share with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, not because of some great gift that I have, but because of even a curiosity. Maybe you're like me. <laughs> maybe you're just like me. And you, someone, you've been to a church, but maybe someone just needed to ask, hey, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Do you want to know him in your own heart? You know, and, and, and I'll say this. Um, <laughs> this isn't what I was planning on doing, but I'm gonna go for it. There might even be kids, you know, I was 16, but, you know, maybe you're young right now, or maybe there's adults here, but I just, I want you to ask your neighbor to the person to your left or your right, just ask him this, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus, and if not, do you want one, okay? Just ask him. So, Ah, come on, Jesus. And this, like, I'm a, I guess I'm a pastor at a church with Elliot and Kevin, and, you know, I consider it a great honor because when Jesus paid for that question, when we get to ask that question, it's kind of a, if you think about what you're asking, you're asking someone to pray a prayer for a man that they don't know about to come into their heart and to transform him. Unless this is God, it's absolute craziness. I mean, I mean, really. But when they pray and they go, oh my gosh. And this is why he says you must become like a child, right? And so this isn't right. This isn't ritual. This isn't formality. This is actually entering like a child, faith like a child, right? And so I become really acquainted with asking questions, you know, and... um Tomorrow, we're going to go out and share the gospel and do different things. And, but I, I just want to you know, tie together, even from the get-go, that you have your testimony and your story 
which marks you. And I just shared a little bit of my testimony and my story, which marked me. And I just even brought it out right now. And then it releases us. Does that make sense? It's pretty simple, right? And so out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Man, this really impacted me. Your testimony is powerful, right? And so that, that being said, you know, that hunger and that desire, God is going to continue to move in your life in such a way that you're even see, seated here tonight, right? You're here because the Lord is drawing your heart to grow. And um, I'll share, I'll just share this little bit because I want to boast in the way that the Lord draws us. I never thought I'd go overseas as a missionary. I was a missionary in China for four and a half years. I grew up in Williamsburg, Virginia. You know, I grew up suburban, um, you know, city and uh, we traveled here or there, but it was mainly, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, for that kind of purpose. And um, when the Lord put that on my radar, it was completely like a friend said, hey, would you help me co-lead a trip to China? And I'm like, like, I don't know what kind of administrative or whatever help I can be. I mean, I, I don't know what help, because I didn't know what she was asking, but this is when I was over with, at Bethel, and I end up going on this trip, and I'm like, wow, this is a lot of work, but it's really awesome to take these folks out here. And our first trip we went out there, I was enamored by just what the people of China were like, but also I saw the missionaries there, and I'm like, these guys are just willing to give their life for Christ. And it wasn't so much just they were in a different place and different territory. It was the childlikeness thing that I was talking about, where they were like, we're just going to follow Jesus. And I'm like, that's freedom. There's freedom in this. And I said, even if I just go to another place and I'm learning to surrender my control over to the Lord, that's a great thing, right? And any of us, we just want to see that freedom in our own lives. And so one thing leads to another. And I led two other trips. And um, on, the, on the third trip, I was asked, invited, and they said, hey, would you like to come out to the college campuses and minister on the campuses? And I'm like, wait a minute. I get to full-time come out here and share Jesus all day long? And like, that's it? This is amazing. Like, I'm in. And, but I'll tell you, it, my experience at that point was college dorms in China. And I'll just say to you, the college dorms in China are not at all like college dorms in America. They didn't have bug nets. And there was lots of mosquitoes. And it was, it was stretching, to say the least. But within those multiple hundreds of kids that were there, over half of them came to Christ within a short period of time. And I was like, I'm like, Jesus, I don't care what this costs for the joy that is in me is so much greater than the mosquito bites upon me. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm in, you know? And I don't know if you guys have things in your life right now where you're like, you're out of your comfort zone, but I pray that the Lord would put something in your life that if, if kind of the, the mosquito bites of life have got you down and all you're just doing is you're just feeling like, man, it's just, it's hard. I feel like the Lord wants to put a joy that's set before you as Christ had on the cross for us. He wants to put a vision and a hope and a desire in your heart, maybe even tonight, and something that he's gonna put upon your heart and say, I'm gonna go for this. It doesn't matter if you're young. God could put in your heart right now, hey, he showed me that he wants to do this in my life. And I'll tell you this, that that dream from the Lord, that's something that you should cherish and hold. When Mary was given the reality, and she was young, when she had Jesus, she wasn't, you know, hey, there's going to be a birth. And by the way, it won't be through your husband. It's going to be something different. She cherished it in her heart, right? And so God's going to birth some things even in your heart tonight. I really believe it. And um, so with that being said, you know, I wanted to talk tonight about the kind of the, I would say the, the engine behind all of this, right? Because if we go to the nations and we don't have love, it's nothing just doesn't matter. Like, you could go to the nations and be like, hey, I'm the most spiritual. I've gone to China. I'm a missionary. You going to give me a pl applause? Come on. Somebody applause me. Really. You know, like, and I, but if that's what you're going for, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to just boom and be gone. And, but if, if the Lord shows you something in your heart and he goes and says, but I'm going, <laughs> and if I'm going, do you want to go with me? And wherever he's going, whether it's China or I see a lot of people working really hard all over this city. 
and you're just doing the daily and you're getting an invitation to labor in a, in a daily fashion, but the Lord's like, hey, I want to show you something in this co-laboring that's going to transform your city. It's going to transform through your own hands and the Lord begins to give you a personal invitation. So I want to talk about that intimacy with the Father, okay? And so I'm going to, can we turn to John chapter 17? And how many people like John chapter 17? Come on. So if you just want some time to get wrecked, just stay in John chapter 17 for a while. And you could probably, for me, I've been even in the first few verses here lately, and it's just been really impacting my life. Okay. Let's see here. It says this in John chapter 17, 1. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you've given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you've sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So I just, I just want to look at some of this. And, you know, I love John 17, 3, where it says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. A lot of people want to know the meaning of life. They're like, what's the meaning of life? Ne- never mind eternal life. <laughs> what's the meaning of this life? What's the meaning of this, that, or the other thing? Well, here it says it's to know you, right? And so we go, wow, that's amazing. The, the meaning of life and life eternal is to know God, right? And so you can say it to your children, and your children can tell that to your children's children, and so on and so on. But there's a reality of knowing God, right? You can know the scripture and know that word, that is said, but then he wants you as the living word to know him. He wants you to really know him, right? It says eternal life is this, that they know you. They know you. And I would, this, this reality of knowing is a, is a personal thing. You know, um, there's, there's a knowing where Adam knew Eve, right? A yada, right? A knowing of God between God and man as well. And I really do believe that the Holy Spirit, he wants us even tonight to lean in like those kids that we are to know him on a greater level. And maybe there's things we said, God, been there, done that, kind of moving forward. But then he speaks. <laughs> then he speaks and he, he, he beckons you into something new, right? And what if this evening, I truly believe it, he's going to speak to you something tonight, beckon you into something tonight that is going to cause you to say, hey, dad, I'm willing, whether it's China or next door neighbor. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever that is, when he calls you, there's a grace to move, okay? And so I wanted to just unpack in verse one and two, it says, Father, the hours come, glorify your son that your son may glorify you. In Exodus 33, it talks about the glory of God analogous to his kindness, his goodness. I'll cause all my goodness to pass before you. How many people know that passage of scripture where he says, I'll cause all my goodness to pass before you, Moses, right? So I like to make it a little bit simple. When I see his glory, he just wants to make himself known as good, (laughs) right? If he's like, hey, Moses, I'm going to cause my goodness to pass before you. He's like, hey, Father, the hours come that the goodness, that your goodness would just be poured out on your son, that your son may glorify you, (laughs) okay? For you granted him authority over all people. You granted him authority over all people. It says, why? That he might give eternal life to all those you've given him. So if you look at that, God is going, I gave authority. And what's my authority unto? He says, what? To give eternal life. But what is eternal life? What's eternal life? To know him, right? So his authority directly is tied to knowing him, right? It, it, this is not like authoritative figure that's anything apart from intimacy. Everything about God's authority is directly tied back to knowing him. And who is he? He is good. So his authority is always back to anchoring him, anchoring you in his goodness. Amazing, 
right? And so these are things that, why am I setting a foundation of some of this? Why are we going here? Because it, it to me, I've been on a journey lately. Uh, when I came back, as you, you probably all have had, like when I came back from being overseas, I probably went and said, Lord, I was expecting to go back, but we are doing something incredible with the living room back in Williamsburg. But I still had questions. I'm like, Lord, I, I just, I just want to be, I, I want to lean into your goodness and I, I don't want to stop short of believing great things with you. Because if you're such a good father, which you are, then I, I don't want to not believe you for great things. I don't want to believe you for what I can do. I want to believe you for what your goodness, your kindness, your generosity, for what you say that you are, right? And so a lot of my journey lately has just been going and saying, well then, Father, a lot of what I see with Jesus, he said, I only do what I see and I hear. And so then what does it look like to have intimacy with the Father? And people will all, a lot of times kind of, I think, question, what does Father, what does God's voice sound like? Who has ever asked that question? What's God's voice sound like, right? Well, I've been on this journey lately, and I've been thinking through that. And if you, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. And famous chapter, right? I have the NIV here, and it may be a different punctuation for you guys there, but um, my version says in verse 4, okay? I, I'm bringing us here, and everybody, if you can get there, it's good because I want you to see it. If you don't have the NIV, I think there's different punctuation, different versions, but I like this. It says this. It says, love is patient, comma, love is kind, period, okay? And then it goes on to expound. God is love, right? But it says, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it does not keep record of wrongs. And it keeps on going, right? And expounding in those first two statements that love is patient, love is kind, period, right? And so people will ask me, like, and sometimes they don't even ask me, but I just tell them because I just wrestled so much. I'm like, what is it to hear God's voice? And if the voice you're hearing is not patient or kind, it's not God. Okay? Right? He says, love is patient, love is kind. He's defining himself here. This is who God says he is. And then he goes on. So that's a really simple litmus for me because sometimes my emotions are not lining up in my day and I didn't do something the way I wanted to. And God says, even if I dishonored, he won't dishonor me. That's what kindness, that's who he is, right? And so when I'm learning and trying to go, hey, Father God, I, I need to hear from you here He's patient and he's kind, right? And so is that making sense so far, right? Pretty simple. Um, And let's go address-wise, I think it's Matthew 14. Let's go to Matthew. Um, um, Hold on one second here. 13, I may be be getting chapters wrong. Um, Matthew, Mark, where? Matthew Mark, hold on one second. I'm looking for where he says, come to me all her weak and heavy burden. Can someone give me an address on that? 11. Pardon me. Thank you. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm bringing us through context of scriptures that's giving us a heart understanding of the Father. Okay? I love this par- portion of scripture because he talks about his heart again here. Right? It says this. Um, Verse 27, Matthew 11, all things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and to those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So he's basically saying, hey, I know my dad. All right? And now he's about to unpack something. So if you ever wonder in your emotions and your hardship and your shame and your blah, 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 what God is like, again, here's something that really helps me anchor. Okay? Here he says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's amazing. Rest is a gift from your Father. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So his yoke teaches you. But what's his yoke like? For I'm gentle and I'm humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. So his yoke is meant to teach us that we would have a rest in our soul. So that can't be a harsh yoke. Because if you're 
yoke in your own soul is already, oh man, I'm beat down, I'm exhausted, then the yoke which he's talking about that's supposed to give you rest cannot be. Does that make sense? Right? It really, really pretty important here. It says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you read that, it says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The word there for light is also the same word for kind. So my yoke is easy and my burden is kind. So there you have you again in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, love is patient, love is kind. Here he is again talking about who he is. He's, he's kind, right? Be kind. I see, I see your shirt here. What's your name, ma'am? Michelle, come on. It's true, and, you know, and I used to see license plates and all kinds of stuff, and I'm like, that's just too, like, bland. Be kind. I'm like, but God's kind, right? And so I'm like, amen, amen, you know? Um, and so I, I really want us to get down to some basics here because this shouldn't be complicated. If I'm meeting somebody and they're coming to Christ, I want to immediately teach them how to hear the voice of God and discern. So I'm going to say to them, hey, you hear your father's voice, and a lot of times what I'll even do when someone comes to Christ, is I'll ask them a question that I know baseline, that the answer is 100% easy, and they're not, they, they, they know their father's voice. And I'll say, hey, ask him this question. And I'll ask him even out loud, like, speak, speak to him out loud so they can just practice, Father, do you love me? And I'll tell you this, I was in China, and um, I'm, I'll, I'll set the picture for you. I just got done working out with this young guy. He saw me working out. I do body weight exercises, and um, he we get done with the exercises and I've already grown in a little favor with him because I just, sh- you know, we're hanging out, right? And, and we're just enjoying this time and I share with him about Christ and uh, as I share with him, I ask him if he wants a relationship with Christ and he says, you know, emphatically, yes. But then I, then I, this is like one of those moments in life that's just special and this is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm sharing this. This is why this microphone exists, <laughs> that, that this, these things would be imparted to our hearts, Right? I said to him, I said, hey, have you ever heard God's voice before? And I said, you hear him as easy as you breathe. He's, he's easy. He's easy. He says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's easy to hear God's voice. And I, and I said to him, I asked him, I was like, let's ask Papa God a question. Do you love me, Father? And he asked out loud, you know, um, Baba, ni I wo. And he's like, and, and he sat and Literally, 10 seconds later, he's just crying. He had heard the voice of God, and it's over this lake, and I'm just wrecked. I'm watching him be encountered by God as a dad, and all we're doing is asking a question and revealing something that's already true about who God is and who he is to the Father, right? And so out of these, out of these places, why am, I, why am I sharing this? Because, you know, we want... What took me for my life, again, these are my stories of my life. I was born again when I was 16. It wasn't until I was 27 years old that I understood you could hear God's voice. (laughs) Right? And so I'm like, somebody, make it easier. (laughs) Right? So I'm like, let's fast track you to what is actually true, and it's easy. Right? And um, all the spiritual gifts and all the things that maybe people say, I don't know if this is for that or this is for that, if we boil it down to the fact that all this is meant to reveal a good dad, it stops being so uh, hard to understand. It, stop being, it stops being so potentially um, you know, challenging because why wouldn't you want to hear your father's voice? If, if not hearing from God is for today, then what father doesn't talk to his kids? What kind father wouldn't want to talk to his children in their time of need? At, what kind mother wouldn't want the same, right? These aren't hard concepts to put flesh and bones to. And Jesus said, I only do what I see and I hear. And he came in the flesh. So he's just like you and me, living the same spirit, the same way. He, he came and he was tempted in every way. So he had to have had the same things and questions and concerns and hardships that we did. And it had to be that he, when he was saying these things in, in Matthew chapter 11, he's going this is the deal. <laughs> you know, this is the way it is. And we get to remind each other and remember and reconcile one another to these simple truths of the Spirit of God and the Word of God so that we can be built up. Amen? And so, um, you know, uh, that being said, you know, I, I want to do just 
that. I want to take a little bit of time, even right now, um, for us to just be still and know that he is God, okay? And this isn't something you have to perform for, but I want you, if you're like, I, I'm not great at hearing God's voice. You're his kid. Everybody can hear the voice of God. Every single one of us. Just, just trust that the spirit of God through the word of God has a word that he speaks over you. And he said, the sheep, the sheep, the sheep shall know my voice, <laughs> right? He said it. So I get to come into that invitation and just simply come right now. And so um, I, I want to start with, like, basically what I want to do is a couple activation exercises, just like I was talking about with, like, hey, Father God, do you love me, right? And I want us to do these things, and sometimes we do this, like, so I'm praying as I'm thinking, um, Sometimes we do these things where it's just be still and it's like a corporate moment. But I actually, I want, us, I want us to exercise faith that you hear him like this, right? Because if I'm at a restaurant hanging out, it's not like I have a lot of like sometimes downtime. And if you're in life and the kids are running around and you're like, Papa God, like, you know, if you don't have that moment to get alone in your room or whatever, I want us to exercise. I'm also a personal trainer. So I like to like try it, you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Let's exercise this thing. Let's exercise our faith. Amen? So I'm going to ask some basic questions, and this isn't a right or wrong thing, but I just want to exercise our faith together and just listen together. So the first question I just want us to kind of calibrate into is, Father God, do you love me? Okay? And the, and, and so for this um, if you want to take your phone out, you want to write something down of what you hear, that's fine. But the biggest thing in this is not even just like, hey, I have to remember everything. This is about activating. I'm trying to get us to, to get out of the mindset that we're at this place and we're at this time and it's this quiet time in the morning and then I hear from God and then when I'm out mowing the lawn or I'm out you know, doing other stuff, it's a little harder for me. Because I can tell you, you hear God, you hear your wife's voice, you hear your husband's voice, you hear your brother's voice, you hear your sister's voice, so why don't you hear God's voice? You do. Right? Okay? So um, we're just going to do a couple activations. The first one, let's just listen, all right? Everybody, just ask him this question. Let's ask out loud. You ready? Father God, do you love me? Okay, ha. Huh. I'm not going to give a lot of time in between these, some of these, because that's not what conversation is doing normally. Does that make sense? Trying to get us to break down a little of the, all right? Ask him this, Father God, what's your favorite thing about me? I can't get it wrong. All right, here we go. Let's ask him this. Father God, what's something you want to do with me that I've never done before? Okay.
All right, and I'm just going to pause from there. All right, so I, I want to give, I want to just give some time for testimony because testimony builds us into what's normal. You realize faith is normal because the righteous live by what? And who are you? How are you righteous? So that means you live by faith normally because you only have one kind of righteousness, Jesus. Faith is your absolute normal. It's your normal, right? It's amazing. That's, that's some, whoo, right? So that means the righteous shall live by faith and faith comes by hearing. So hearing from God is normal. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing from God is normal. Just as faith is normal, just as righteousness is normal, this is all our normal. We're awakening to our normal. And that's why we, we've got to make it normal, <laughs> right? So I wanted to give some space here. Who here would like to share a little bit of just even what they heard? Anybody? Maybe, maybe to like a question that kind of excited you. Something the Lord said to you that was exciting to you and you're like, man, that kind of, that kind of surprised me. And that was fun. Anybody have one of those? Yeah. Can, do you mind? What's your name, sir? Kurt. Kurt. So on, on, the last, on the last question, um, what's something you want me to do that I've never done before? And it was just trust me. Trust me, I'll show you. Come on. Come on. Come on. And wait, Kurt, I want to ask you something. So in that... What did it feel like when he spoke to you that? Because that, trust me, I'll show you, sounds pretty general, right? But like when, it's, when he spoke that to you, what did it do to you? It, it just gave me an excitement that something is coming. Come on. Something's coming. Yeah. Come on. And so, see, Kurt knows in his heart that's from his papa, right? Knows in his heart it's from his papa. And you might go, well, I didn't get something, you didn't give me an address. He might have given you something real general, right? He did say pretty general things like, follow me, <laughs> right? Who, who else has got something? What, what's your, yeah. What you got? You want to share? Yeah, come on. No? no, no. no? Okay, well, hey, you know, he says we got to become like kids. I, I, praise God. Um. Do you, what's your name, buddy? Eli? Yeah, Eli. Well, you know what? I, I want to encourage you with something. I'm going to just talk to Papa God, and I want to encourage you with something I hear from Papa. All right? You're a champion, Eli, and you are a man of faith. And he loves your faith. He loves your curiosity. And he loves the way that when you ask God questions, God loves spending time with you, man. He so enjoys you. And Eli, I see, I see a man who sees God and knows God in you. You're a man who's going to lead. You're a man who's going to stretch others in their faith to walk by faith. I really believe it. I really believe it, Eli. Come on. Um, let's just extend our hands out to Eli. You ready? Let's just say this. Heavenly Father, bless Eli. And may we all walk in childlike faith like Eli does. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, who, who else has something that the Lord is showing them? Hey, what's your name, ma'am? Twyla. Hey, Twyla. When I asked him what his favorite thing was about me, he said, you have a grateful heart. And that was, that made so amazing. It, and, you know, sometimes when it says eternal life is this to know me, how known do you feel, Twyla, when he says, you have a grateful heart? Like, before we came here, this is not, this is great. I like this, and only for the fact of equipping and encouraging. But if I live and die by opportunities to get on a microphone, but if I go and, you know, Daddy, what do you say about me? He's like, I like you. I enjoy you. I can be on an airplane. And some of the best times in our day can be the still, small, just papa, doing your work, doing your yard work. That is eternal life. It's part of it. This is a small fraction of what we get to do. But if we don't live the authentic part of the other stuff, it's going to clang because it's not going to be relational. Does that make sense? And so um, 
Who else? Who else has something? Has it, was, were you guys encouraged by this? How many, how many heard something and that, that, made, that was like, I'll say this, it felt easy. How many, it felt easy, right? As it should, right? And how many of you guys, I know me, when I'm having a hard time sometimes, it, it says, um, I'm going to go to this scripture because I think this is worth our time. Matt, let's go to James chapter 1. And then I'm going to have the gentleman come up and we're going to just share a few words and um, we'll go from there. So James chapter 1, it says this, um, verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. I'm going to wait for everybody to get there because I want us to kind of take a look at this. Verse 2 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, okay? Because you know the testing of your faith, all right? And this is, I'm not saying this is the absolute rendition or translation of this scripture, but it's something that I've been thinking about lately. In verse three, it says, because you know the testing of your faith, and we know faith comes by hearing. So what if it's the testing of your hearing? And God's not testing your hearing to show you that you can't hear. He's testing your hearing to show you that you do hear. And he's going, a spiritual father of mine, well, uh, this is Bill Johnson saying this, but he basically said, he, goes, he gave the analogy of testing, and he said, you know, the best, he said when he was younger, he, he used to see when they would take a, a, a tire inner tube out, and they would want to know where the leak was at. They just submerge it in water, right? Pump it up, pump it up, submerge it in water. What would happen? Bubbles would come out, right? Where the, where the leak's at. And then they would... They would take it out, dry it off, score it, glue it, patch it, and then what would happen again? Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up, put it under the water. But this time, it it held. So both times are tested, but his point in that, he said, at least 50% of the time in your life, the Lord is testing you not to show your weakness, but to show how he has sealed, how he has covered, how he has strengthened, how he has restored. And I want to make the supposition to you that if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, the Lord is causing you to abide or causing you to become grafted in and lean into him by hearing. Hearing, yes, his word here, and, but also that rhema, that conversation where he's speaking to you those things. And as we've even just heard through a few examples, how encouraged we are on a personal level. and Because what does that do? It says... Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. Because when you're asked to do something new, right, and you step out into something new, there's going to be trials. It says this will come. Not maybe, but it will, right? There's going to be hardships. There's going to be stuff. But when he gave you the word and you go and you incline your ear, I have to hear over and over the same thing. How many of you guys, you heard a promise from the Lord and you have to go back to that promise on the road to fulfillment? right? You got to keep on returning back to the promise he gave you. Perfect example. We, we have, I hope I'm not spoiling a story, but really briefly, we have the coffee shop that's being renovated in this wall. Um, we had to take down this beautiful renovated wall that we, we had made that look, made this place look awesome. And I'm watching my brother walk out this journey of the word the Lord had given us, but also him personally. And we're sitting there in a meeting and I could tell his, it was already settled in his heart, but he needed to talk about it just externally. And when he was able to talk about it and we had some conversation, I could see that the wall was a done deal, but the Lord cared about him. The Lord cared about him, you know? And the Lord cares, the Lord knows you are already win. The victory is at hand, but he cares about us going that journey with him so that it's, I'm leaning not on my own understanding. I'm not just a son who's walking independently from the father in fear and worry because the father knows he's going to come and he's going to take me in and we're going to walk it out. But he just doesn't like me walking in that anxiety, that fear, that stuff. Does that make sense? So when I'm coming to the Lord and I'm going, because you know that the testing of your, and I'll say your hearing produces perseverance. And that word perseverance there is the word um, hypomeno. And it literally means by abiding. So by 
taking time to hear from the Lord causes you to abide in the Lord, <laughs> right? Rely on the Lord. Um, and it says, let perseverance finish its work so you may be mature, incomplete, not lacking anything. And, and so the Lord testing or causing you to lean into that hypomano, that, that by abiding is actually causing, it, it's causing you, the word of God says here, to, it says that you, you be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And my supposition on that is not because it's you need to be perfect, but because you leaned into the perfect, the perfect one. You walked with the one. He, the, the learning of hearing is about Papa Daddy. With him, you and him, nothing's impossible. But you apart from him, it's never the journey. So if, you know, the, the, whole, the whole thing, this is not just an exercise. This is, this is family. This is the way of life. This is knowing God, you know? And so um, there's going to be a lot of things that we read in the scriptures that we go, Psalm 1611, I'll make known to you the way of life. I'll make known to you the way of life. This one offends me. In my presence is the fullness of joy, and my right hand are pleasures forevermore. I have to lean into the Lord because there's a lot of things in my day that don't feel like that. And he's like, count it all joy when you hit various trials, Ben. And I'm like, we got to talk about this, Father, because I'm not seeing what you're seeing right now. He does. He talks about it, and he shapes my, my perspective in a moment. He, he, he gives me context like any father would. And I'm telling you, I don't hear from God like I'm somebody special. Neither do you. Because if you elevate it, it'll diminish someone else and it'll make them say, well, that's just some gift for some prophet. No. Sons and daughters of God hear their father. Come on, Amen? So that being said, um, as the sons and daughters of God, we all prophesy. Um, I wanted to have the guys just to come up and share, not as an example of a few that prophesy, but we get to come into your body who don't know you as well as your body does, to be able to encourage you. This is the reason that I want these guys to come because we don't know you like you know you. Does that make sense? And so within that, um, let me ask before we do that, does anybody have questions? Anybody have any questions? Like, I, I get what you're saying, most of it, but this doesn't make sense. Or that, that doesn't jive with me. <laughs> I like to leave that space. Yes, sir. What's the difference between hearing God and a random thought? How do you know? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. So, it, so, two things. And again, these are, these are things, these are great questions, and I still don't have this fully worked out. I don't think any of us do. But my tenet is this, and this is something that I learned from, again, from spiritual fathers and mothers, but I believe God has a greater capacity to, to keep me than I do to, to be deceived. And so if I'm going after something and I'm like, uh, Father, I don't know if this is entirely you or not. It sounds patient. It sounds kind. Uh, it, it runs through the filters of the word of God, but I, I just don't know. I just go. And if there's a check that I trust, he says, A, I return all things for good for those that love me. And, that, you know, scripture after scripture after scripture. But the biggest thing is I believe that he can, he can redirect in my worst failure, he says he returns it for good. So I, I believe, just like any father or mother probably in this room, that if your son and daughter is going, I'm just going to want to walk on a journey with you, Dad. I don't know if I'm hearing you perfectly, but Elliot gives this example all the time. You know, like if someone gives you almost just a basic task and you have to keep on coming back to the person to ask if the task is okay, the task is okay. Say it's like sweeping the floor, you know, and you go over and you're like sweeping the floor. Like, hey, do you, you just say, hey, can you sweep this whole area over here? And you start sweeping, and then, you know, your son or daughter comes back over. He's like, hey, I swept some, but I, I just don't know if, like, this is a good enough job. Like, do you want to? You know, and it just feels like it's, it's kind of like there's no freedom to feel, fulfill the job. And I think that sometimes we feel that, like, God, I don't want to mess it up, right? So, oh, man, I hope I'm hearing your voice because I, I, we check back and we check back and we check back. But the father's like, he's like, you know what? I, I got you, you know? And, and so my, my encouragement is to take the pressure off. And if it filters through the word of God in a way that it's, it's going to love and to edify, because love is patient, love is kind. That's why I say that voice. The voice of God is patient and kind. And that to me is one of those things. And it's been hard for me, I'll be honest with you. 
like I sat on the plane today for two and a half hours just sitting before the Lord because sometimes I cannot believe that he is that way. It's hard for me. I'm like, you're just patient and kind. I've been walking with you. I'm 40 years old, and I've been walking with you, and I didn't know you even spoke. I've been a missionary. Sometimes I was hard on myself when you weren't hard on me. I'm having to unlearn. There's shame. It probably attached to some of that stuff. I'm like performance-driven things that I've had to unlearn. And then I sit there, and I go, well, I guess we are going from glory to glory, from goodness to goodness. So why this should this surprise me, you know? And so, um, yeah, you want to share? Come on up, guys. Um, one of the ways that you know um, uh, determine between your voice and God's voice, I mean, A, you practice, you know, you, you, you take a risk and you practice in a safe environment of, with community, with, with people around you. But another thing is the more you spend time with the, with the Father, the more you know him, the more you walk with the Lord, um, you actually start thinking like him. And this is why the word of God is really important. This is why for, you know, in prophetic culture, if we're going to go, uh, you know, after prophetic, we must be in the word because it's, it's our filter, right? So you know at the end of the day, the worst thing you can do if you have the mind of Christ and you know the word of God, the worst thing you can do, the worst thing, which is really the best thing, is give a word and be kind to them and encourage them. <laughs> so you are safe because you actually know God and you have the mind of Christ and you are kind to people. But what is prophetic word? What is prophetic word? This is another thing you have to understand. Your authority as sons of God is that when you actually speak, when you speak, you create, right? So this is the beautiful thing. This is why we must be in the word of, the Lord, in the word of God. We have to have that filter. Uh, this is why the Bible talks so much about what we say, you know, because as the sons of God, God, God gave us uh, um, authority and, and command to go and create uh, bring heaven to earth, if you will, right? So when we speak to the person, I may perceive something. I've had this before when a person wasn't a musician and I gave a prophetic word, you are a musician. And they're like, I'm not a musician. I'm like, oh no, you are a worship leader. You are a musician. You're going to sing, right? Year, two years later, coming back, they sing on the worship team, they're playing the music, you know, so what, what did I do? I partnered with heaven to, to affirm who they are and to release grace because when we speak, we release grace, right? And, and, and this is why it's really important to know the word of God and make sure that it comes with edification, with love, with kindness. And this is why Ben tonight talks about the goodness of God, the love of God, because it's a foundation of everything. Yeah. And it, you know, it, it's, so if you look at, what is the name, what is the Holy Spirit's name? The paraclete, right? And if you look at the word for to encourage, if you have the gift to encourage, well, you have the, I'll say it this way, you have the gift to encourage because he's in you. <laughs> like, the paraclete is the paraclesis, and it means literally to encourage, right? So the, the active agent, the person of encouragement himself lives in you. So if you're like, Father, I don't want to overly encourage this person. What's, what if I'm too vague? What if I'm, I mean, I, I cannot tell you how many people I meet that on the outward, I'm like, I don't know if you're in a same-sex relationship. I don't know if you're in this. I don't know if you're in this. But they probably don't know God's goodness that's actually intended to lead them to repentance, which is the only way that they will come to know God because God is good. And when I release the word over them and I go, hey, I just want to encourage you with something. The Holy Spirit is, is on that, and it says, I know, it says, I know the, the, the plans I have for you, hope in the future, right, in Jeremiah. But then he also talks about, he says, I have more good things to say about you. Than, I'm, I'm coupling two scriptures here, but I'm going to make a summary of it. Then, then grains of sand on the, oceans, uh, on the ocean sides or stars in the sky. So if you pick up granules of sand and you look, even in a small little bit, there's thousands of encouragements in that, thousands so when I go up to a lady, I mean, I'll give you an example. Today, we, we were at the hotel, not the hotel, but the airport, and this lady, they were there, and sitting in front of us, she had a Chinese shirt on, and it said New York on it in Chinese characters, and I, I knew, like, you know, and so I'm talking with her, 
And I, I, I'm being honest with you. I looked at them and I'm like, I don't know what, where they are with the Lord, but I could just, I had some questions and this and that. And, and I stopped trying to regard them in my flesh and be like, judge, judge, judge. I, I just was like, I let the spirit speak forth. And he says, don't worry about what you're going to say before kings because it won't be you speaking, but the spirit of the father speaking through you. And I'm speaking before queens, kings right there in front of me. They're royalty. They may not know, but I just began to encourage, prophetically speak life over them. It's six o'clock in the morning. And they were like, this is awesome. Elliot, you know, we're all there together and we're sharing life. And they go, thank you so much. I don't know if they know God. And at that moment, I just felt like the Lord's like, hold, hold, plant that seed, you know? And I'm never shy about asking the question that I said transform my life. But I also just felt like in that moment, for that, for that moment, I just felt like hold. And I'm just being honest with you, you know? But one of the things that I've seen really is if you're questioning whether you can overly encourage the kids, you know, who, who here's a mom or dad right here, you know? And like, you know, you, you look at your kids and somebody else comes up and just, encourages your kids in front of you how does that make you feel like awesome right and you know in the same way like, when we do this before our heavenly father for the kids that don't know him he's like have all of heaven's going you're speaking into their identity yeah. heaven doesn't see the drug addict heaven doesn't doesn't see the issues heaven sees the solution heaven sees the person the identity and we speak that forth and as elliot was saying we partner with that it's not fake it's the true reality and so if you're wrestling with it, you're wrestling with flesh and blood, and you're also wrestling with, you know, battles not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. And so what I want to say to you is sometimes you're going to have to trust that even the Holy Spirit's going to give to you something that's going to maybe offend what you see before you. Yeah. It's, going to, it's going to cause you to feel like, that's not what I see. And, but you're speaking a destiny and a hope and a future that is beyond the unseen. Or beyond the scenes, excuse me. <laughs> you know, so all that to say, we uh, would love to just be able to share a little bit with you guys. Is that good, guys? Um, so b before we transition, one more time, anybody have any other questions? These guys might even have Not answers. Any, or... any questions? There's no bad question. We're in the quipping time, yeah. so let's yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I actually know the answer to my question, but I want you guys to say it um, because I think I'm asking it on behalf of maybe some other people here. But uh, after you're brave and step out, and speak what you're hearing from God over someone when you walk away, like the voice of the accuser or doubt, you know what I mean? Like questioning if you did what was right. Um, do you have any advice for after that moment of when you were brave and? Yeah, so again, it, it comes back to, for me, that relationship with him because, yeah, the, the enemy is going to, try to discourage me to prevent me from encouraging somebody else or if I feel I have a word and it might not be entirely accurate but I did step out and I was edifying I did my best to love them in that moment and I feel like man well I must have heard that wrong but when I would turn and walk away like he comes like but again it comes back to that relationship that's not the father's voice that's not the Father's voice. It doesn't matter what you say because I know what he says about me. I know that I am loved. Yeah. So, and that's what I'm trying to do and encourage somebody else. So, again, it just comes back to relationship. And you could dismiss anything that comes against you because he is always encouraging. He, he, he's always speaking out of a place of love. So. Absolutely. And, and this is, for me, uh, what, what Kevin, I, I think, guys, this life... It has to come down to this, and I know you heard me. I, I, I joke last time I think I came, the uh, Holy Spirit reminded me I said this. I was like, I have the same message. I just say it different ways, you know, and, and it's true, and it comes down to knowing that you're loved. What Kevin said, having re that relationship with God, the discouragement, right? It, it, it's, and we're talking about, and Ben talks about tonight about the goodness of God. So you gave a word and you walk away and you, you, you are discouraged, you, it has to come back to, in, to Jesus, you love me, right? Jesus, you know my heart. You know me, you know? And, and, and resting in that because if not, 
the, it's the world, the enemy, your friends, sometimes your family. Do you know what I mean? Everyone has an opinion about you, right? But the only opinion, the only voice that matters, that's supposed to speak louder than any voice on the outside is the voice of the Father. And I promise you, you will see what you, you do some amazing things in the Lord if you get this. This is a great question in what we're talking about, if you get this foundation. But a lot of times, I love that Ben went through exercise. It's such a simple thing. Father, do you love me? Father, what do you think about me? You know, and, and, and I, had to do, I had to do it uh, this afternoon. I'm laying in bed, you know, and, you know, and, and, and all these things coming and all these emotions. And, and I'm just like, Father, do you love me? What do you think about me? And instantly everything was silent because the only voice is his. So it comes back to your personal relation with Jesus. Yeah. Anyone else? That's a great question. Anybody else? Yeah. And Jesus had the same questions that we do. And, you know, if you look in John 15, he says, go to John 15, because I think if we're not tying the goodness of God back to the love of God, and we don't understand that Jesus had the same exact wrestle, um, and he walked it out in the same exact way we do, then we won't understand that we have uh, the life opportunity in the same way by the same spirit to walk it out. If we go to John 15, verse 9, okay, it, it, this, is, this is Jesus talking from experience and from life. It, it's beautiful. He says, as the Father has loved me. So he's going, I've experienced the love of my Father. Yep. As the Father's loved me, okay, so I loved you, okay? Now, remain in my love. Yep. Like, that right there sums up Th this intimate walk and out of the overflow, you're going to hear from your father's voice. You're going to hear, you're going to know, but it says now remain in my love. That word remain is the word abide. So all these different things that we're talking about, Jesus himself, God himself, the father, son, and Holy spirit themselves have always, and will always live like this. And so this qualifies us in the same exact way. It's not for the sake of just, I don't, call this, people call it the prophetic, people call it words of knowledge, people, I just call it talking to my dad about people, because <laughs> he talks to me about me, so if you break it down to being really simple, that God's love is just dad being with his kids, and that Jesus is a son being with his father, as the father loved me, guys, so I loved you just out of the way the father loved me, and so, you know, remain in that love, yeah, right, and so, that's, that's what this is, and um, I hope that... Any, any other questions, guys? Like Elle said, there's no bad questions. Come on. I think what, I, what I'm just sensing is that what's a struggle for a bunch of us as we never heard our dad say he loved us. So to come into a relationship with Papa and for him to say he loves me is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is that's true. That is true. Um and I, I think even as you're saying, like, no matter even if you had the best earthly father, the world, the world drives out of performance. And even, like, I learned things in kindergarten and middle school that were harsh that my mother and father never taught me. I learned them from my friends. I learned them from that. And they were kind to me, but the world wasn't, <laughs> right? And so I had to unlearn the harshness of the performance mentality of the playground that I took to the missions field, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I'm saying to you, it's, there's a, I think there's a, there's definitely the kindness of the father. Um, I, I'm going to share you with you this one other really good thing and we'll, we'll, we'll go. Okay. Go to me, go with me. Ephesians chapter five. This is going to, this is going to be really good. Okay. Ephesians chapter five. <laughs> and go, it says verse 25, Ephesians five twenty five. 
Fire, Holy Ghost. Shakarama. All right. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And presenting her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. So that says um, in verse 26, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. That word there is rhema. It's a conversation. So the, the image the Lord was giving me is by Jesus as our husband sitting down with us as the bride. And when we're having hard thoughts about ourselves that don't exist in his heart, he's like, he just affirms you, puts his arm around you, and just speaks. And he's washing you with his affirmation. He's washing you. And he says, this presents you to him as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish. It's not your strength. It's him. And, I, and I'll say that even this far, it's not even your strength to know how to hear him really well. Sometimes just me sitting with him and, and just being loved, as Jesus just said in John 15, 9, he goes, just be loved. Being loved by my papa is enough. But I want to say it to you that, that the spirit of your bridegroom is patient and kind, and he washes you over with the water of his word. And that, that is the reality. He is the one who makes you holy. He reminds you of your holiness. He reminds you of your blamelessness. He reminds you of your spotlessness. He reminds you when you forget, right? And so um, that's how we, if you're having a hard time, you know, in any of these things, receive first from him. And if you're hard on someone else, it's probably because you're hard on yourself in that very area. Right? We know that. You see someone pretty frustrated at something, usually they got that, they got something in their own life that's stirring up and kind of poking. Um, but love you guys. I hope this has been good. And, yep. And, you know, and I hope that, you know, my prayer that by the end of this weekend, all of us would, would hear the Father's voice that you are loved. And I, I hope that by this weekend, every one of us here will um, take a step of courage to maybe forgive our earthly father, you know, and, 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 and receive the love of the father. You know, uh, that's been my heart since I've been coming here. You guys heard me. That's my message that every one of you will experience the love of God. You guys heard my testimony and like, that's what changed my life. You know, it was a orphan boy in the back of the church hearing the father's voice that he's loved. I believe for every one of you this weekend that every one of you will have that encounter. And tomorrow night we're gonna go after things, but I wanted even tonight for us to have a conversation because I think a lot of the block and a lot of that thing that we don't go move forward is this. It's what we're talking about. You know, it's the love of God. It's, it's, it's hearing the Father's voice. Um, so that's my prayer, I believe, for every one of you. But it's also your choice. I can't make you. You have to step in. You, there is a courage, and I believe there is going, uh, even right now as we're talking, there is a grace that's released for it. Okay? Yeah, and just as Elliot's saying that, I mean, we don't want to give a word for something, and the Lord's activating something and not give place for it, right? And so if, let's just do this. Let's just pray this out loud. You ready? Just a super simple thing. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my earthly father, my earthly mother. I thank you for my family. And even if there was lack, I ask you right now to bring forgiveness, healing, compassion, understanding, and your voice of your spirit and your word into my heart right now. (laughs) 
just listen to him. I really believe he's going to just speak some things. It doesn't matter even if you had the best mother or father. Like, he's still better. If there's some of you that are praying right now and you're saying to yourself, I really appreciate you praying, Ben, you guys praying, and but I could just use some encouragement in this area. Would you be so vulnerable as to even just raise your hand if you're like, hey, I, I could just use some encouragement in this area? Yeah. If there's, if there's some folks, if you just keep your hand raised, I just want to bring some folks and let's just come around these guys and we're just going to, we're just going to, it says, you know, just lay hands and we're just going to love because we are the extension of the heart of God. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, yeah. So, so let me be really clear. If, um, if you see someone with their hand raised, let's just go like a handful of us over there and let's just take a moment just to hear what's on their heart, okay? And then we'll just stand together in prayer. Is that okay? We're going to take a few minutes to do that because the, this is really important. This is important to the heart of God. Amen?